please like our video and subscribe to Rotowire. Then go to rotowire.com slash pod for a free 10-day trial. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Rotowire Fantasy Baseball Podcast, the Sunday night slash Monday morning version. It is April 4th. We are officially in baseball season. I am Scott Jenstead. Joined, as always, on Sunday nights by Jeff Erickson. Uh, thank you for listening. Thank you for joining us. If you could please rate and review the podcast, it'd be fantastic. Also, uh, if you go to iTunes or Stitcher or have you listened to us, uh, give us a bunch of stars. Leave a nice comment. It does go a long way towards helping people find the podcast, etc. cetera. Uh, so baseball started a little bit of a crazy foot here. We had the the Nationals uh, Met series. Uh, you know, we uh, first game got postponed. Uh, due to uh, some COVID tests, the positive tests from the Nats, Nats organization. Uh, we don't know the exact players. We know some guys who may continue to miss time, Kyle Shore being one of them. It sounds like the Mets Braves are going to be – they're postponed for Monday. Sounds like they're going to play on Tuesday. From a fantasy angle, it was a tough call. Like We had you know someone like Jacob deGrom or Marcus Stroman or Max Scherzer – and, you know, lineups locked on that, uh, you know, lineups locked for every other pitcher on that Thursday when everybody played. So you couldn't, like, wait to put him in. So I ended up with zeros from a couple of guys. And, you know, it's one of those things. Like, you're not going to bench to Grom or Scherzer because they play one game on Sunday. You wanted it. But uh turned out to be a zero. Not not a great way for your, for your SP1 to start the year. Yeah, and it's hard enough sometimes to have nine pitchers that were scheduled yep. to pitch in that four-day period to begin with. Yeah, uh, you know, you may not have, a, you may not have had a replacement, uh, so you might have been kind of, uh, you know, hosed anyhow. But uh, when, uh, on top of that, it was just, it was rough. Um, and you know, I, just... I, I think I even with some hitters, I had had that problem. Now it looks like they're going to play on Tuesday. They're not yep. going to play tomorrow. They're not going to play the Monday game against the Braves, but they are going to play Tuesday. So it's not as bad as the Marlins or the Cardinals last year. Yeah. But true. We'll see. And it's one of those ones you just got to keep watching the news because it could, you know, I mean, it could change, you know. Yeah, and one it more positive com- test. Yeah. Exactly. It may be completely different tomorrow than it looks like uh, tonight. So that's one that, uh, you know, definitely, uh, ch- definitely check your lineups. I think with Washington and Braves guys that aren't studs, you know, they only play two games. The, the, the Nats only play two games this period now. So I think that uh, yeah, it's tough to risk it. If you got a guy who's definitely playing Monday uh, versus a, a fringy guy who's playing Tuesday, Wednesday, I think I'm – I think I'm sitting my Nats until uh, until I see anything further here that they're definitely going to play. I mean, if if they're looking good for Tuesday tomorrow, I'm going to play Juan Soto. But anybody else, uh, you Trey know, any Turner, kind of you're playing too. Yeah, Trey Turner. I like the top guys. I think you got to play for two. But anybody that's like you're even kind of thinking about, I think I'm benching and just in case they they miss multiple games and the fact they only play two in the first half of the week. Right, and we know for certain that we're not going to be starting Schwarber. Uh, yep. if, if you have him, Josh Harrison, you're probably not starting. Um, yeah, John sure. John Lester sounds like he's going to be another one. Miss time, I you know hopefully you weren't starting him anyway. But if you were, let alone uh, Alex Avila, yeah, yeah, I guess Lester and an NL only or you know a deeper league for matchups that kind of thing. But uh, those are the four guys that sounds like are going to continue to miss time. That's right, uh, and you know I, I, I and we'll find out more. They had nine guys quarantined and yeah. four tests positive, and so that that's a pretty heavy burden and we'll find out more about workouts but you know it's it's a weird day too it's it, it is a travel day for some i gotta pull up the schedule to see like uh what time everybody's playing but uh there's a um, pretty... and almost there's only i think there's only two teams that don't play monday too right there's 14 games that's right yeah. and uh there is minnesota detroit is at 110 eastern uh 405 yeah, eastern toronto some, texas you're gonna uh, get some opening days for some of these teams to be their first series so that makes sense yeah yep KC Cleveland is also a day game. Baltimore Yankees is six thirty-five. Things like this this whole six o'clock thing. I get it. Why they I did this back when you know you know you're worried about having families go to the games, but when you have right. minimum capacity anyhow, ah, just start I know it's it's time. so it's so four o'clock Pacific time is so ingrained in my head to like check lines before that that I have to. Uh, yeah, every once in a while those 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 three o'clock start to jump that jump out at me, but. Yeah. Uh, we talked about the Nats. They play the Braves this week. Uh, speaking of the Braves, I wanted to ask you, and it's funny because we both had this question on our list. Uh, yep. Who had the worst uh, worst first week in a baseball? Because, uh, you know, obviously my A's had a very tough one. Uh, the Red Sox got swept by the Orioles. The Braves scored three runs in three games against the Phillies. Uh, Freddie Freeman, Ozzy Albies, uh, Ronald Cunha, Marcelo Zuna, three for 44 as a, as a, as a, as a foursome there. Not, uh, not what you're hoping for the first week. And I get it's baseball. It's a long season. But, man, as an A's fan – you lose four to your division rival, and you have a minus twenty six run differential. It's hard to uh, there's sweeps, and then there's sweeps, and that was one of the one of the latter for sure. I hate to say it, but it's definitely your A's that had the worst weekend because combination of expectation, <laughs> the lack of close games. There was one game that was close, and then that got blown out in the ninth inning. They uh, gave up they gave up eight or more runs in all four of those games. Like yeah. that's you don't see that very often in a baseball series. They just got absolutely. I mean, it looked like. 
those teams look like they weren't in the same world of class of baseball teams. And right. I hate to admit that as an A's fan, but uh, you know, again, it's April. Oftentimes the A's play badly in April, but um, I don't know. The, the Astros look like a, just a completely different team. Continuation from the playoffs too. Yeah. I mean, there's that. Plus you lost your closer. You lost Laureano yeah. and Sean Murphy. Now both of those guys should be coming back relatively quickly. Yeah. And Chad Pinder got hurt today too. Chad Pinder got hurt today. I, I failed. To, I, I, it really, you really have to squint to find some good news. Uh, yeah, it's the worst. Uh, the Bra- the Braves, I mean, yeah, given the expectations, given it's a division rival, yes, that's frustrating. But it was also Nola, uh, Wheeler, and El- Eflin, who we a lot of people liked going into this season. And that that's one of those series that, like, if it happened midseason, we probably wouldn't even just like, oh, the Phillies had a couple of good pitching games in a row. And you wouldn't even think about it. It's just it happens early on. Whereas if you had a minus 26 run differential against the team you're supposed to be competing against, I think any point of the season, that'd be a pretty uh, a pretty big problem. Yeah, I, I think so, too. Um, and but, then the I Red mean, Sox, I mean... Red Sox, yeah, that's a rough... I mean, they got swept by the Orioles, who... I mean, I, I think baseball price is well-known. They had a 0% chance to make the playoffs with their, like, their playoff odds or whatever it was. But, I don't know, swept at home by the Orioles is a pretty damn bad start. It is. It's really bad. Um, I, I will say the uh, the only thing is, what were your expectation levels for the, the Red Sox? The now, I was not I was not high. I mean, I think probably some people were just because they're Boston. But, yeah, the, you're right. The A's were going to be are supposed to be a contender and to get blown out like that is, is, yeah. is not good. Yeah. I mean, and that's just the thing. I mean, A's had reasonable expectation to contend in the West. Yeah. They, I mean, although they, they had a really crappy off season, let's not lie. I mean, they did they get did. Rosenthal, uh, but they lost Semyon. You got yeah. Elvis Andrews to replace him. Who's batting eighth. I mean, it's a, and, like made three mistakes in the field over the weekend too. Yeah. So. yeah. He let Elvis Andrews or he let, uh, uh he let that was the Altuve score on a, literally a pop-up. Like it was so bad. And it's just, and Stuff like that. Was, it wasn't like he was slacking. It was because he was out of position, though. That was the thing. Yeah, it was, a little, it was out of position. It was a little slacking. I don't think he quite expected him to run. And then he, like, four-hopped at home, too. So it was like a, it yeah. was a combination of really – and then he had, a, he had a tag earlier where he just missed the tag. And just uh, – just it was a frustrating weekend. Not, I mean, it's, it's again, it's baseball. It's six months. We've got 162 of these. But, you know, you get so excited. And that, the problem is they have the Dodgers and the Astros again this week. Like, they're staring at, like, two and eight pretty – if they play okay this week, they play. They're staring at three and seven, and you know two and eight, one and nine is pretty real as you get into the, into the stretch of schedule. It's uh, yeah, it's, it's not ideal at the moment. Not not great, Bob. Not great. Uh, no, I, I, it's really bad. Um, and then you know just the Red Sox. I mean, yeah, I, the fact that they're not scoring any runs against the Orioles that's the scary part because let's face it. I mean, Bruce Zimmerman, great story, happy for him. Yeah. Please come on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah okay. you may, and maybe you expect it from John Means a little bit, but the the Matt Harvey Adam Plutko combination is not what you expect. And I don't know, ba- ba- Boston can't pitch. Avaldi looked pretty good, but you got Mar- Martin Perez, Pavetta. Uh, they need Erod back badly. I mean, Garrett Richards got smoked today. It's yeah. uh, Tanner gonna... Hulk looked good though. He did. He did. He had some bids too. We're talking about Fab. He had some bids out there too. But uh, I think they're going to give up a lot of runs. I think you're probably right about that. Um, I, I think I think they're. But we all thought we thought that all along. I mean, we did. We did. Yeah. yeah. They didn't really, you know, th- their ads were not ones that, that really fired you up. But uh, speaking of ads, let's jump into Fab. A lot of money spent in Fab this week. Consider we had one series per team. Not even a week. We had one yeah. series per team. There were eight teams that played four games. A couple teams that played zero games. We had some three games. But there was, there was a lot of money thrown around. There's, I saw a couple teams, like players that are really good NFPs players that have spent like $600, $800 this, this weekend. So it's... There's a lot of money out there. The top bid was was Julian Merriweather uh, in Toronto. He had uh, massive bids everywhere. My two main events was I think was 319 and 412 or something like that. I think yours were pretty similar numbers. Um, he had two saves this weekend against the Yankees. A little strange though, because the first save uh, Jordan Romano pitched the ninth in a tie game, which you know we talked about with Hendricks. You kind of want your closer to do. He had a scoreless inning. Then the Jays scored in the top of the tenth. And Merriweather came in with the guy mm-hmm. on second and shut down the Yankees uh, to get the save. And then today. Uh, Romano came in in the eighth inning. Be- uh, you could say because he's the setup guy, or you could say because the Yan- it was the Yankees' top of the order. Like maybe they were just high leveraging Romano as the best guy. And then Merriweather came in and uh, looked insanely good against Torres, Bruce, and Gary Sanchez. Um, throwing 99, had a changeup to Jay Bruce that kind of darted down. Like if he could throw that to pitch to lefties, like that's a weapon against lefties. Yep. The slider to strike out Glaber Torres is like 87 on on the black. It was. I mean, the guy looked really good, but we were talking about someone that, you know, he, he last like, season with real innings was 2017 as a starter. He wasn't very good then. Um, but, you know, I didn't know what to think. I went and watched that inning today because I just got back from uh, – I was out of town. I got back, 
And I watched that inning, and I was like, oh, that 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 looks pretty legit. But he has some injury issues. Um, I was not close to the bidding. How aggressive were you on Merriweather, considering we don't know fully if he's the closer? We don't know his you know his history is uh, you know not the best, and the fact that uh, you know we've we've seen three games. Yeah, and you know Romano is actually good too. I think that's that, a good point. Yes, um, I I wasn't aggressive enough. Uh, it was four twelve and three seventeen in my two leagues. Good players got them. You know, one of them's won a main event league before, and one of my two leagues, the other is Andrew Geller. And I don't know what his, his track record is, but I've seen him on Twitter a lot before, uh, and he, he's a good player. Uh, and you know, you can tell just by how, sometimes how people express themselves. Sometimes I feel like you can, but you know, the thing is. He still had even the outlook going into the season said like he has a zip on the fastball. He's just he was coming back from TGS. And, you know, the yeah. thing is, it's actually a pretty good idea to bring, bring him in as a reliever in a way. It's and he's older than most prospects. So it's kind of like, boom, you know, you know, he should be mature enough already right away. I don't know. I mean, he, he looks pretty. He looks the part. That's for sure. Um, I've got one more chance to get him. Uh, the Rotowire Staff Keeper League runs at 11 o'clock tonight, so we'll see about that if I get him. I did raise my bid there from what I did before, but it was and that's the... and that's a league with like prospects and stuff. So he was not uh, he was not someone that anybody had picked up anywhere then. No, um, yeah, it's just believe it or yeah, not, not surprising. There's a lot of prospects out there. <laughs> there a lot of prospects. Out there. Uh, uh, it, in relief pitchers, rarely are kept as prospects. So uh, no, uh, but the thing is, so I bet, and, and Cesar Valdez is also available in that league too, which is interesting. I know we're going to talk about him too. Uh, I bet around 170, 180 for him. Didn't come close. Yeah, I was not even that. I was in the low 100s. Um, I don't know. It's tough. The problem is everybody has a thousand dollars right now, and like 12 out of 15 teams are teams that like need closers or think they need closers. With the, yep. you know, if you had Trevor Rosenthal, suddenly you thought you were had a top 10 closer and you don't anymore. We don't know how long he's going to be out for, but. And then there's so many teams that were like, you know, grabbing committee guys or grabbing guys who had half of jobs. There's just a lot of teams that need closers and, you know, even more than usual. So I, I get the bidding. I wasn't super close. Uh, I need to see a little bit more, but, uh, you know, and I'd like to know if he's in the role, which I, you, like, I think the key point you mentioned is Jordan Romano is really good. And I don't think this is like a clear cut path to him being the closer myself. Yeah. Uh, so I, I want to see the next time. But the fact is. He did come in, and they, they did do – and Romano did face the top of the Yankees order, too. And I think that's, he did. Some, that, that's he did. noteworthy, too. Diekman was available in one of my two mains. and went for 138. Uh, we were kind of in on him, too, but we thought that maybe it would be cheaper because, you know, hey, uh, you know, it's – you know, he's – they haven't had a save yet. but yeah. And we don't know for sure. They, Even though the they, beat writers – They may not get it. They may not get a save. We don't know. Yeah. The beat writers have said that it's Deepman, but you notice it hasn't been a quote on record from Melvin or anybody like that. So we're assuming it's Deepman because it yeah, was Deepman before the Rosenthal quote. signing. He had some sort of quote. Those guys, you know, he would be the clear next guy up, but it's going to be, you know, kind of mixing and matching. So I think it's going to be, if I had to guess, I'd be like, uh, you know, I think it's mostly Deepman unless there's a situation where you get lefties in the eighth inning, but you know, that's going to happen. And, I just don't know. I have no idea who would be as a righty. I mean, I'm a fan of the team, and I don't know. I mean, Sergio Romo, you know, that doesn't fire me up. Lou Trevino gave up a big home run to Jordan Alvarez over the weekend. Uh, J.B. Wendelkin's kind of in that mix, so I, I think it can be pretty messy with the with the righties. But the thing, the thought that uh, you know, if it's not a matchup thing, I think Deekman gets it most weeks. But yeah, he was mm-hmm. available. One of mine went for 125. I was kind of in the, I think I was in the 70s or 80s somewhere in there, and I got outbid. So yeah, um, I don't know. It's been it's been a series. I just I, my trouble like with ads week was like. I should have a lot of drops. I mean, I drafted the main event twice within the last week. So it's not, these right. are all, I'm taking players I like. And granted, you know, guys after round 25, I'm fine kind of moving around. But, you know, some of those guys pitched well. I picked up Logan Allen, who has two starts this week. He was my, he was my 30th round in one pick. So I'm not going to drop that now. It's yeah. just, uh, I had trouble finding guys. I, I met a couple of guys that got hurt or, or really struggled or, um, you know, I had picked up for just this week. But uh, I, I didn't have a lot of guys that I was willing to drop right away. So I was, uh, I was a little hesitant to really kind of go crazy with the ads. Yeah, I'm in the same boat. To uh, Thursday, Saturday, I wasn't as well. So within the last ten days, so similar. Yeah, the, these guys really are close. studs. I can't drop them. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I but, picked this guy in the twenty seventh round for a reason, Jeff. Yeah, man, I'll, I'll I'll tell you what hurt was cutting a fifteenth rounder today. Uh, who? Bobby Witt Jr. No, who Tony, would you cut? Tony Gonsolin. Um, uh, yeah, I. I went back and forth. I had Gonsolin a 12 teamer, and I thought he was a pretty easy cut there, just because shoulder issues, yeah. and he's not starting anyway. 15 teamer. A little tougher, but yeah, I mean, you just it's tough because not only is he not starting, but 
But now he's hurt. He shuts it down. By the time he ramps back up again, maybe they decide to only use him in the bullpen because he'll never get fully, you know, ramped up back up as a starter. It's kind of a, a, a tougher path to get back in the rotation easily. Yeah, and about the only thing that it was any consolation was David Price getting knocked around. But that's the weird thing is, except I have David Price also. Uh, you know, and, and, but that's the thing is like, oh, I, I backed up Gonsolin with Price. Oh, no, it's May. Oh, great. Yeah. Good job, Jeff. Well done. And well, we'll see. I mean, May pitches tomorrow against the A's, which seems like a pretty good matchup right now. But, you know, he's got to pitch well, too. I mean, pitch well in the spring. But we haven't uh, – and he, he pitched well last year, but we haven't seen the strikeouts. And the strikeouts did pick up in the spring. He's going to be a, an interesting watch tomorrow. Yeah, he is. He is. I held on to Price, by the way. Um, I, I think with Gonsolin, I think you kind of have to because he's he's next guy up for everybody. We're going to talk about Clayton Kershaw later. And, I mean, it uh, – you know, Bueller and, and Bueller pitched really well. Arias was fantastic today. Uh, Bauer pitched really well through five and then kind of uh, gave it up a little bit. But uh, it, it, you just there's, there's going to be guys that, that, that skip starts. They're going to have guys that get hurt. I think you, you kind of have to hold on to Price now because he's the, he's the clear number six. Yeah, I think so too. Uh, you mentioned Cesar Valdez had two saves for Baltimore this week. We kind of thought it was going to be Tanner Scott in that role coming into the season. Um, funny note, there are four guys that had two saves this weekend. None of the four was considered a closer five days ago. 2021, baby. It's... Mark Mark Melanson, Cesar Valdez, Diego Castillo. He was maybe, but a lot of people like Peter Fairbanks. And then Julian Merriweather. But, I mean, those are four guys that right. were not drafted in the first 15 rounds of, of, of 15 team leagues. Like, it's just it's – just, it means nothing. It's the first weekend, and they only have two saves. But it's just funny that the four guys with two saves – are guys that literally weren't closers when we drafted five days ago. <laughs> yeah, and the funny thing, too, with Valdez is every commission service, you, take, you look at the profile photo, he's got an A's hat on, too. But... He does. I saw that. He's 36 years old. Yeah. I didn't quite know that until I looked it up. He pitched in – he was a starter in Mexico, it looks like, in 2019. He was really good, 2.26 ERA in 147 innings. Uh, last year in Baltimore, he was pretty good. Um, you know, K-rate was okay, 22.6%. ERA was good. We're talking 14 innings. Um I'll fully admit I really don't know fully what we have here. I mean, I just I think he's a tough guy to figure out. He's 36, a converted starter, and sometimes those guys work. But I still think it's I still think I'd bet on Tanner Scott getting more saves by the end of the year. I think. I hope you're wrong, because I picked I, him up. I know you did. picked him up yeah. in Tower Wars, and I picked him up in one of the two mains. And he had he had two saves. They used him as a closer. I mean, you you, you have to. I had bids in too. You have to put bids in. Yeah, and the thing is, yeah, it, it's. Holding my nose, but at the same time, like he's got the job. I mean, if we're gonna go with the list, the Chris List theorem of possession is nine tenths of the law. Then, I mean, but yeah, I mean, this gets to go full Cole Sulcer on us in a hurry. I'll yeah, but, yeah, Cole Sulcer was the similar pickup uh, a year ago for the Orioles uh, in the short season. Uh, let's jump over to offense for a second. I'm gonna come back to closers, but um, Kyle Isbell was uh, was a popular pickup in a number of my leagues, starting in the outfield for Kansas City. Uh, five hits in a stolen base so far in his 13 plate appearances. They have five strikeouts already, too. So a little bit of a swing and miss. But, you know, we're talking super, super small samples, obviously. Uh, played in high A in 2019. Had five home runs, eight stolen bases. Not hit well. He only hit 216. But hit uh, hit for average in, in, in rookie and A ball in 2018. Uh, had 24 stolen bases across his two levels that year. Obviously didn't play anywhere formal last year. He was just at the, you know, playing because there were no minor league games. But, I've read a lot of good reports on him, but you're kind of going by narrative when people say about him. And, you know, in camp, everybody's saying great things about him. But they've been pretty glowing about him. He won a starting job coming out of spring training. Um, I was kind of a medium aggressive on him. I had like the 60s and 70s bid where I needed an outfielder. But uh, I was kind of unsure on how much to go on him just because we, we know so little. I think you and I bid the same amount because uh, uh, if I remember your text correctly. And we arrived at this in completely independently. We, we both did. bid there 77. Was... And oh, I I, the, I lost to a bid that was 77. So oh, I, okay. uh, I bid 77 I bid, and, I, and that wasn't close. I was at best third place. Oh, wow. He actually went for 77 in, in my main event where he was available. He was actually drafted in my in one of mine. So he was yeah. only available in one of them. Yeah. Which, you know, there were reports of him come, you know, coming out of camp with the job. So if you yeah, were my, paying attention, was, you got him like yeah, 20th yeah. round. That's pretty nice. My second one I drafted the night before the season, he was picked up. And it wasn't even the last couple of rounds. It was like round 25, 26, I think. Okay. Uh, how, what uh, what do you know about this guy? Like how obviously you were you were fairly aggressive making a bid on him. How do you how do you feel about him? Do you think he keeps a job? I mean, obviously uh, there's there's some chances to run with the job in Kansas City. How do you feel about him? I, I think you know I mean there's some prospect pedigree, third round pick if I recall. You know there was some you know he was ranked as like James Anderson as his, as, our, as his 71st rated prospect. That's a good prospect, yeah, not sure. a can't miss prospect. Uh, you know, I don't know. He, he got a stolen base today, which is nice. He likes yeah. seeing that. Um, 
he could be one of those. He had three strikeouts today too. And that's the thing you want to watch. You know, as as a book gets out on him, we'll start to see you know how pitchers adjust him, uh, adjust to him. Because you know, right now he's batting seventh in the lineup. He's he's harmless. He's a rookie. We'll challenge yeah. him. <laughs> you know, once once you know Buzz starts getting oh, okay, well right. let's not see, let this guy see a fastball. We'll see then how he does. Uh, I think that there's some possibility of that happening there. And we see that all the time with uh, guys. And then they have to adjust. And sometimes they adjust. Sometimes they take longer to do it. Um, they uh, they get Cleveland for a couple of games. And they get the White Sox. They only have five games this week, too. So that's kind of annoying. Um, yeah. They got their I hate I hate these stupid five-game weeks. The, st- the first couple weeks of the season, I, I hate the teams that are – like 10 teams are off on Sunday. I hate That drives me crazy. Oh, and, and, you know, teams off on Fridays and Sundays just should never be allowed. Let's just, let's just get that out of there and make it on Mondays and Thursdays only. But I think the interesting thing with Isbell was that this is stolen bases. I mean, 24 stolen bases in 2018 yeah. in the minors, 11 in 2019. I mean, I think that we talked about all po- all preseason how you know, stolen bases are going to be tough and tough to find on the waiver wire and tough to draft. You get a guy that can steal, you know, even if he steals like 10 to 12, that, that, that's going to be worth the, the, the bids that he that he went for. Yeah, I think you're right about that. So, yeah, I can see so, it. Yeah. The other the offensive guy that got the most interest this week was uh, Yarmin Mercedes. He of the uh, eight for eight to start the season for the White Sox. Yeah. Um, there, I saw some bids over three hundred bucks in some main events on him. Uh, mine, I don't know if we're quite that high. We had a we had a one hundred one in mine, and I think there was something uh, higher than the other one, and a, and a fifty seven. So mine were not super high, uh, but I did see some over three hundred bids. Uh, he's twenty eight. Uh, in 2019 in AAA, hit uh, hit 315 with 23 home runs and 90 and 387 plate appearances. Like a lot of power there. 2018 in high A, he had 14 home runs and 410 plate appearances. My concern on him was, you know, UT UT only, which you can deal with unless you have one of those guys. If you have right. Alvarez or Cruz or Martinez or uh, Fran Mill Reyes, like that takes out five teams that can't even bid on the guy because right. you can't you can't Stanton, play two. Th- you know, also Stanton, yeah, I forgot about that one. I think JD Martinez is going to get out for the eligibility, but. It's hard to like spend a bunch of money on a guy and then pick him up and you can't play him. I mean, you don't want you clearly don't want two UT guys. So if you don't have one, fine. And then I just I don't know how his playing time looks long term. I mean, obviously he's hot right now, so he's playing. But um, you know, Andrew Vaughn suddenly is you know maybe not starting every day. So it's uh, you got to figure at some point they give him sat a, twice. He sat twice in three games. Frustrating, but you got to figure at some point they give him a run at PT. I just I don't know how secure Mercedes playing time. If you know if he obviously he's not going to hit eight. He's not going to hit eight hundred. So if uh, there's going to be some slump times, there, I just don't know. I wasn't willing to spend the big money on a guy whose whose position was not locked in yet. Yeah, uh, I was locked out on one league because I have uh, Jordan Alvarez, so there you go. I was one of yeah, those. I have I, ha- I have Cruz and, and Martinez my two mains, so I was pretty much locked out. The Martinez one, like I said, I could have done it and wait till JD gets out for the eligibility, but it's just tough to do. Yeah, it is. Uh, two eighty nine in one of them, one forty three in the other. Uh, yeah, I'm not going to get that. Uh, you know, it's funny. And then I, I start looking, th- start sifting through the. Uh, the online championships to see some of the results there. And it, it's all over the place. I saw him go for 26 unopposed in one of them. Uh, <laughs> but I think that's the one I have crew. So obviously I'm not bidding on him there. Uh, I had a league, I had a league where he wasn't even picked up. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, it fully runs the gamut in the online. Yeah. The 12s, the 12s are always insane. We yeah. already know this. Yeah. I had, I had some, some bids over 200 and then other, it's just, it, it, it's hard to, people always ask me for, Oh, what should I bid on this guy? And with the, in the online, it's just, it's tough. I can give you kind of an average where I think someone goes for if you add them all up. But league to league, it's just really – I mean, there's so many leagues. It's tough to know. Yeah. I got shut out in the yogurt league. Uh, Mer- Merriweather, I-, I bid 137, wasn't close. I thought Valdez at 57 or Deepman at 37 would have a chance, but nope. Uh, but it's it's funny. those The bids in TGFBI were lower than they were in the main, which I thought was My, kind of interesting. Mine were much lower. I think it's more just not as many teams bid, but – we had some high bids, but then everybody else, like I picked up Michael Walker, and I was like, oh, he's owned everywhere. I'm going to pick him up, and I had no backup bid on that one. Michael Taylor I got there, and he was there was only one backup bid, and he was pretty aggressive in some other leagues. So mm-hmm. I just uh, – I think you get uh, – I, I, my league didn't have a ton of activity. I think it's probably what it was. Mine did. I think it's more, though, because we drafted early that yeah. there were there was a lot more bidding last week. There was. There was a lot of guys to pick up last week. Yeah. Uh, but Mercedes went yeah, unopposed for 11. Again, though, I oh. – he went I, for he went for 125 in my yogurt league. Yeah, I like that you're you're, you're adapting to me there. On that one. <laughs> I am. Yeah. Um, some other closer news. Uh, Joaquin Soria left today. 
Uh, it looks like he strained his calf, and he was pitching in the eighth inning anyway. So uh, and it was clear he wasn't he had not won that job out of camp. Uh, Kevin Ginkle came in, replaced him, and then Chris Devensky came in and pitched the ninth and got the save to go up a home run for to Fernando Tatis that probably is still going. It was really smoked. Um, did you do anything in this situation? Stefan uh, Crichton, you corrected me last time. I think I got it right this time. Yeah. Uh, was kind of the guy in the, and then last year, and then was kind of the guy in February. Uh, everybody kind of cool on him a little bit as, as Soria was getting the buzz. Um, did you do anything with this situation? I, I put in some minor bids on Ginkle, but I wasn't super aggressive on anybody here. I just I don't know what they're going to do, really. I got Ginkle. Uh, and that was like our fourth or fifth choice. And I, I kind of sneakily like it. I think he is 27, throws 94. I just wonder if they're going to actually want to see if he can do the job. I mean, it just he was there. He was their guy in waiting two or three years ago. And mm-hmm. I don't know. Prince Zavinsky their 30 year old veteran. You know, we kind of know who he is. He was really good in 2017. You know, decent the last couple years, and then last year, you know, didn't pitch very much. But I don't know. I think I, I kind of feel like maybe they want to see what they have in, in Ginkle right now. Maybe give him a give him a few shots in the next few days, save ops, but. Predicting saves is always difficult, very difficult in Arizona has been the last couple of years anyway. But uh, I was I was small bit on Ginkle, too, with the thought that if I didn't get Merriweather or Valdez or, or Deekman, I'd try and slide him through and see what happens. It was kind of a medium bid for me. It was like 50. So, oh, okay. Uh, but it's also a league where it's I have McGee, and that's it as, close, as a closer right now. I have, yeah. I have Crichton on my team, uh, although maybe not anymore. No, I still, <laughs> still have him. There you him. go. But I cut Gore and Gonsolin in that league, picked up Ginkle and Romo. Uh, so we'll see about that. But I, I had Pagan. I got two wins at least. Uh, I'm, I, he's a good pitcher at the very yes. least. So I'll hold on to him for now. I don't know how much longer I can hold on to him. But the problem with Ginkle this week, though, is look at the schedule. Colorado. Okay. Uh, coming up that's next. Right. You're right there in Colorado to start the week, aren't they? And then they, get, uh, then they come home to face my rampaging Cincinnati Reds. Nick Castellanos getting ejected, hitting bombs. It's awesome. I love it. Dude, they're, I mean, they've had a lot of things go wrong, and yet they're still, the, the last two games, it's funny his, how quickly I forgot opening day. I'll tell you that his, much. His quote on Yadi Molina was classic. Oh, it was amazing. So yeah. good. I love Castellanos. Yeah. I, I love way, for people fans, didn't hear the Castellanos quote, he goes, he could hit me in the face and I'd still ask him for his autograph. He's a Hall of Famer. <laughs> about Yadier Molina, which was, it was classic. It was so good. Yeah. Um, in Kansas City, uh, Wade Davis came in, uh, relieved uh, Greg Holland and got the save for the Royals on, I think that was Friday. Um, did you do anything with Wade Davis at all? I mean, he was he pitched four innings last year. He was pretty awful in 2019. I say pretty awful. That's being kind. ERA was 8.65 with a 14% walk rate. Uh, walk rate's been over 10% three years in a row, and that's if I don't count last year when it also was. We only pitched four innings. Uh, I'm a full out on Wade Davis, but I did see some bids on him for some smart players, so maybe uh, maybe I missed out on that one because uh, I guess you could see Greg Holland does not have a, a, a secure uh, grip on that job either. Yeah, well, Holland came in, like, I want to say the eighth inning maybe. He, he did because he threw two-thirds of an inning, and then Davis came in and only pitched two-thirds of an inning. So, yeah, Holland so had to be Holland in there. Holland started the, yeah. the ninth, and then he got yeah. – yeah, so that was it. Uh, but it, it was kind of strange. Now, did Holland pitch? I don't think Holland pitched today, though. Uh, uh, they they got they got beat pretty badly by Tyler. They lose like seven to three to Texas, right? Yeah, uh, that's right. Uh, he did face. I mean, Davis faced. You know, struck out both batters he faced. I mean, sure. I mean, there's a history there with the team. There is not the manager. Last and, uh, year, history that was really good. I mean, he actually pitched today. He, wait, Davis did pitch today. He pitched uh, one inning, gave up a run, but. Uh, I mean, he's got a, a history of being good. It's just uh, it's just many years ago. Well, so if you're a Holland a guy, if you have Holland on your roster, that's actually good that Davis pitched today in a 7-2 deficit. Really uh, good. Or, or 6-2. Six, six, it was 6-3 when he came in and gave a run. Yeah, that's that's really good. You want to see that. Uh, so, no, I did not bid on Davis. Is the, long, is the long-winded answer to short response at the end? No. Yeah. I, uh, I did not either. I saw a couple. Uh, Eric Heiberlich picked him up in a couple leagues. I saw he's a guy that's won the uh, overall in the online championship before, and he's aggressive pretty early on in the season. A mm-hmm. couple other guys I want to ask you about before we get into some news and notes. We have a lot of those. There are a lot of injuries over the weekend, unfortunately. Uh, Donovan Solano is a guy that hit over 300 the last two years. He's a hard guy to figure out because there's, there's very little power. There's no speed. So there's like two categories that off the bat kind of go away. But in a 15 team league, I mean, the guy hit 326 in 2020. He hit three. He hit 330 in 2019. He had a 43 percent hard hit rate that that year. I mean, there isn't enough, you know, deep fly balls in home runs, but it's the ball hard line drives. I guess the key with Solano is he's playing every day and he's hitting third. And granted, it's the Giants. The lineup's not great, but you got a guy who's already got seven hits in 500. He's hitting third and playing every day. At some point, just the average of runs are going to have to be worth it in a, in a deeper league. 
Yeah, and I was caught off guard by this one here because I thought Lestella would be the guy starting at second base. Now, keep in mind, uh, they were playing at Seattle, which means they had an extra lineup spot. Good call. Um, Good. And they were facing a bunch of lefties. So that's another thing you might kind of want to worry about there a little bit there. I, I think, point is, I think uh, Lestella is going to get a lot of time still. Um, I think that's something to be, be a little bit wary about. But the fact is, lestella has been the DH and Solano has been the one playing the field. So if you're yeah. a Lestella guy, if you have him on your roster, you should be a little worried. I was going to say, because Longoria is hitting the ball well, so he can't move uh, Solano over to third base. Uh, I know he's going to play shortstop. Brandon Belt's at first. They don't really have a spot. It's just, uh, it's. I mean, you look at some sites, they have Longoria on the bench, but I don't think that's going to happen. I, mean, I think he's healthy. Longoria's going to play. Uh, but they, they, they do have an extra guy for, for the, one of those spots right now. Yeah. Um, right now, and when a guy's seven for 14, yeah. yeah, right. How do you, how do you do anything with that? And you got Buster Posey hitting home run every day. It's uh, there's all kinds of crazy stuff going on in Giants land. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, I, I, I have when when Posey went deep against uh, well, both the first two days, each of the first two days. You know, by the way, he feasts off lefties when he's when he's on. He always has. But and so and he he was up against two good lefties, but he, yep. even he Kikuchi was getting everybody out except for yep. Buster and Longo. Yep. Uh, Longo sniff attack and got him on the first pitch. Each each night, Longoria's homers are on first pitches too. By the way, and Longoria's sneakily been pretty good since last year too. He has. He just he's got that plantar fasciitis in his foot. So I don't know yeah. if he can play every day. If he can play in the field every day. But I mean, you look at last year. You mentioned last year he had a forty five percent hard hit rate. He had eleven and a half percent barrel rate. You and I talked about that. When we were talking like deep picks, and I ended up grabbing him in one main event. I'm like, the guy still hits the ball hard. You know, if you yeah. can use him as a backup corner and you know, kind of play matchups and. You know, maybe avoid the Dodgers and avoid the Padres when they face them just because they got a lot of good righties in there and a lot of good pitchers overall. I mean, Blake Snell's a lefty. You don't want to face him either. But um, I don't know. I think he's kind of a bench corner bat in a, in a deeper league right now with the thought that if he – the plan of freshman flares up, you drop him and you kind of play him until he gets hurt. Yep. Yep, that's right. And I, there, I think – Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, but I just think, yeah. And the thing is with all these guys, he's kind of – you know, we gotta, we haven't – we don't know what their park's going to play like this year. Yeah, that's uh, true. Last year was a pretty good park place to hit. And so that might be encouraged and encouraging. And we don't know how good the Mariners pitching was that they faced too. That might be the other thing. Kikuchi looked good, but Marco Gonzalez did not, uh, did not look great in that, uh, in that first game. Right. They're at, the Giants outfield situation is a little bit interesting too. They've got Alex Dickerson, Austin Slater, and, and Dubon kind of three guys for, for two spots. Cause he is going to play every day and you know, he's yeah. slumping a little bit right now, but it's one series. Uh, Slater got everybody excited, hit a home run and then didn't have another hit after that. Alex Dickerson came in with a pinch hit home run. Um, I think Dickers is actually pretty good. I would like to see them just play him, but it seems like they're going to platoon him with Slater a bunch. Well, they're, the Giants are all about platoons. That's they are. one thing Kapler is set, and you know they, they that's that goes from the front office. That's not just a Kapler thing. Um, yeah. And I think that makes sense. You know, you, you talk to the best score sheet players out there, and where where you deal with the bigger ben, uh, you, when you're setting your lineups versus lefties versus righties, they're like always always platoon your guys, especially your lefties, especially because well in that case in score sheet there's a sim. That the sim actually works against uh, lefty hitters, against lefty pitchers all the time, too. So it's even more important. But always, always, you know, do that. Uh, is the, is to do the, the platoon the platooning. It really works. I guess my only thing is I do kind of like Dickerson. I just don't know that he can't hit lefties. He had 21 at-bats in 2019 against lefties. Mm -hmm. And he had 11 at-bats last year against lefties. Right. Like, I just – I don't – I mean, he may not be able to hit lefties. And they may, they obviously know the players better than I do, but – 30 at bats over what is that three years in the majors? Like I just uh, I don't know, and I, I maybe I like him more than the team does. I don't know. It could be possible. <laughs> yeah, uh, and you know what? How many times have we seen it? Like whether it's Jesse Winker or you know yeah. other people getting a chance against lefties. Now sometimes they you know s small sample it works for one year and doesn't the next. Max Kepler comes to mind, but yeah, for sure. You know, yeah. Again though, the only way you find out is by giving him a chance. Yeah, if you, if you see what is that 30 at bats over two seasons, you're just never you're never to be comfortable in that situation. But one last guy I want to ask you about before we get into some news and notes. Uh, Alex Reyes was available in some 12 teamers, probably some of your older 12 teamers, too, because he didn't uh, last week. We didn't really have the news that he was the closer. They waited a long time. They said he's going to start the season as the closer. Um, did you have him available and how, nope. how aggressive was the bidding on him? Because I, I imagine that's a spot where uh, he's a he's a big prospect pedigree guy, throws hard. Um, they do have Jordan Hicks there that we think probably going to close at some point as they ease him into this. And they got Giovanni Gallegos, who's a really good pitcher in that situation, too. So it's kind of a muddled situation. But uh, how aggressive were people on Reyes uh, where he's available in your 12s? Not available in my 12s. Okay. Already, in, in fact, 
not even the week before uh, was really? available. So th- he was drafted in both of my both both of my uh, twelve. So alas, I cannot answer you. So you tell me how how aggressive were people in yours? I'm gonna tell you he was available in one of mine for sure. Uh, he went for 257. So people were uh, he was uh, right underneath uh, Merriweather in that league. Merriweather was 269. Alex Reyes was 257. Yeah. Yeah, that, that's that's. How well. do you how do you think if you had to bet right now on who gets the most saves in St. Louis, do you still bet Hicks? No, I bet Reyes. Nope. Bet Reyes. Okay. Uh, I, I'm, and I I, I have zero Reyes and I have a lot of Hicks, so I'm not happy about that. But no, that's not true. Yeah. I have one Reyes in a uh, in a DC, so I'm happy about that one. But is that just a you go with who has the job now and he's gonna he could run with it if if he's good he's gonna be good and then you just leave him there? Yeah, and I actually have some reservations about Hicks too. I've kind of. Okay. I mean, we all know how hard he throws, but he's got to have it, you know, return, turn into results at some point too. Yeah. I I worry about Reyes and he's never had a walk rate under 12%, but I mean, I think that, uh, you know, as a starter and kind of moving around and maybe he just settles into closer and he clearly has the stuff. He's throwing 97 right now. You could see him, uh, you know, the talents there. you could see him run with a job. So if I, I was a Hicks owner, I'd be a little bit worried about the, you know, like Reyes like converting five of the first six or something like that. And, and getting a little bit of a leash is what uh, you probably don't want if you're a Hicks owner. Right. And the thing is, I mean, if you're going to cite the walk rate on Reyes, I mean, you have to cite it on Hicks too. Yeah, that's fair. So, yeah. So let's jump into some news and notes. There were a lot of injuries and uh, et cetera over the weekend to get into. But first, a note from our sponsor, Underdog Fantasy. Football season approaches. You've got to check out these new best ball leagues and underdog. Best ball is the ultimate test of your live draft skills since there's no in-season management. That's right. Draft your team and underdog automatically credits you with the best performing players every week. You don't need to play the waiver wire or worry about trades. It's just the draft. Who doesn't love drafting? In underdog best ball, you draft as many times as you want because you don't have to do any in-season roster management, saving you loads and loads of time. Underdog's best ball leagues are drafting right now, starting at just $3. Once the season starts, underdog also has daily fantasy and an all-new pick'em game. Go download the underdog app now to get in some of your best ball best ball leagues before the season starts. Enter promo code ROTOWIRE with your first deposit. And Underdog will honor a money-back guarantee during your first month. Love Underdog. Get your money back with promo code ROTOWIRE. Search Underdog in the App Store and enter promo code ROTOWIRE. Please like our video and subscribe to ROTOWIRE. Then go to rotowire.com slash pod for a free 10-day trial. 